Guys, today I'm going to be reviewing the 7 inch HD on camera monitor. Got the AC adapter that I bought separate with it. We're going to talk about it. Plus, I'm going to show you a very, very cheap monitor case that works for 7 inch or less monitors. You're going to love it. Stick around. <laughs> All right, guys, so pick this up. I actually picked up about three of them. One of them I've opened already, but uh, we're going to unbox it, review it. You'll notice there's no brand name on it. I have one identical to this that's actually on my camera right now uh, that I'm recording this with, and it's made by Feel World. And this one, no brand name, it's generic. That one, guess what? They're identical. They're identical monitors. They work the same. The only difference is some of the accessories that get supplied with the Feel World monitor but we're going to unbox this, we're going to talk about this, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a great case to use with this. But let's go ahead and get started unboxing this 7-inch uh, HD, HDMI only camera monitor. So here you go, you have the box right here. As you can tell, if you're looking at the box, this is 1280 by 800 pixels. This is not a full 1920 by 1080 pixel um, monitor. And you can see there's really, other than this IPS, there's really no brand name on that. Looking on the back, there's nothing on the back. Um, so it just says seven inch HD camera monitor. So let's go ahead and get it open. And actually, let's first of all, this is the power adapter that comes with it. You have to buy this separately. Um, even with the Feel World one that I have that, that are already owned, I never had that. So I had to buy this separately. Um, pretty simple little standard. It's not bad, it's, it's not expensive at all. So let's put that aside. Let's get all this aside and get into what you guys are interested in, which is the monitor. So we'll just lift the box, the top off. Set that aside. So first thing that you're gonna notice on the top, this is a, uh, a hood, uh, a sunshade for the monitor. And so we open this up and it flexes open and I don't think you can tell but there is a strip right here whoops I bumped the camera there is a strip right here of, of velcro basically so I'll show you how that works here in a little bit but that it just uh, connects to um, the little uh, frame that goes on the, the camera or on the monitor so set that aside for a second you got a packing list um, tells you what's on here you get the monitor battery plate sunshade HDMI cable uh, plug lock, hot shoe mount, and the manual. Here is the manual. We are not going to go through that. It has everything you need to know, all the settings and everything right here. And then you have a little protective cover. This is exactly how the Feel World was packaged as well. And so the first thing you'll notice about this, there is this protective film over top of this, it gets uh, shipped with a protective film. And then if you can tell here, you have a mode, you have your arrow buttons, a menu, a up and down, or F1, F2, F3, F4, power button. And actually, even though it's, this was a generic packaging, this one says Feel World on it. So this is identical. Um, the other one I opened had no brand name on it. So uh, maybe one got accidentally put in there, but um, this is packaged as a generic uh, HD monitor, but this one says Feel World, so I'm pretty surprised by that. The other two that I opened did not. On the back, you have a battery plate. This is for Sony MPF style batteries. On the bottom, you have a quarter 20 screw for tripods, for uh, ball mounts for the camera, things like that. On this side, if you can tell, it's kind of hard to tell. So we have the spot for our, eight, or our DC plug. We have the HDMI input. And then you have three jacks here and a USB port. That's a USB mini. Not sure if you can see a USB mini and three ports. And down back here, it tells you what those are. So you have uh, for USB upgrade, that'd be firmware. You have uh, that's on-screen display controller, which honestly, I'm not sure what that is. I don't have one of those. Uh, your headphone and then AV. And what AV is, is if you have standard definition, you're pushing into uh, this monitor. It's right there. Over here, you'll notice there is a speaker. And then on this side, we don't have anything on this side. So that's it, nothing on the top as well. So that's your monitor right there. And it's very, very light, very light. So 
that side, open up the rest of the box. Frame, so this is your lens hood frame that clips on there and you'll notice on the top here, notice the Velcro strips. That's how the lens hood that we just got out earlier mounts on there and I'm gonna show you how this mounts on. You have an HDMI cable, it comes with HDMI, but here's the problem with this. This is where um, this differs from the full-fledged packaged field world monitor. And I'm gonna show you this. So the HDMI cable that they send you is not a full, full size HDMI to full size. It is full size, right there, to mini. And so if, you ha if you're using this monitor with a camera that has a mini output, then you're good. But a lot of people are going to be using this monitor with cameras that um, have a full size HDMI output and you want a full size to full size. So for a lot of you, this cable is just going to be junk. The, um, the, the other monitor, the brand named packaging monitor that I had bought before has a very thick with a right angle. It's a very nice cable. This one's pretty fl flimsy, you know, just basic HDMI cable. We have a HDMI lock right here with the screw. I'll show you how this works. It screws right in the monitor to protect your HDMI cable from getting broke off. And then here, we get a little bag that has an Allen wrench and a little screw, which I never use these, but it's there if you need it. And then it comes with a cheap ball mount. These are pretty common with most lights these days. Um, has the cold shoe right here at the bottom that's adjustable right here. And then screw onto the top. Um, bottom line is the, these aren't very good. Uh, buy a good one. Go buy um, a good Manfrotto ball mount for your, your LED monitor. You'll love it. It locks down better. You won't be juggling with it when it's on top of your camera. Um, I would I would just junk this I mean or throw it in a box as a backup an emergency backup but the, these aren't very good so that's everything that comes in the box we're gonna throw the stuff we don't need in there right now and put it off to the side because I'm going to show you essentially this lens hood pops over top you'll see the little tabs right here and in the monitor there are little places where it clips in. So what we're gonna do is clip that on. Being careful not to break your monitor. So I slip, push it down, and then on the side, you just gotta push these in and clip these. Again, just being careful. I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, once this is on, I never take it off. Even my other one that's on the camera um, that's shooting me right now, I never take my lens hood off. And I'll tell you why, because um, here in just a, a little bit at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you that um, really cheap monitor case that I, that I use and why it's important to leave this on when you're packaging your monitor. So that's that, we don't need, uh, or this is the, this is the HDMI lock. If I can get that open, I'll just rip it apart. Make sure don't lose the screw. And then what I'm gonna do just for to show you is I'm gonna take the US or the HDMI cable that came with the monitor. And I'll show you how this works because I'm just gonna use the, the big size of this. So take the full size that's like that. And so what you do is when you connect it to your monitor, this, this little thing, a little screw pops in there. I can line it up. The lights make it a little difficult to see. And you slide it right up against your USB cable, tighten it down. And so what you have there is it's essentially a protector. So this doesn't get accidentally jerked off and broke off and then you break your HDMI port. Now, one thing you're gonna notice, these, these monitors are very cheap when it comes, as far as price-wise when it comes to monitors. One HDMI import, input 
but you'll notice no output. This does not have um, through and through. So you can't uh, plug this in and then have another output going to uh, another source or a transmitter or something like that. So it is a one input HDMI monitor, truly an HDMI monitor. So let's get me, let me get another camera and set up on the table and get rid of this junk. We'll set this thing up. I'm, what I'm gonna set it up on is a little Manfrotto table tripod. I'll hook it up to another extra camera and we'll, I'll show you the menus and show you how all this works. All right, so we've unboxed the monitor. Um, and the one thing I didn't mention about the monitor is does, it does not come with a battery. You do have to purchase the battery uh, separately. And I have now connected it to my Canon Vixia R80 camera. And you know, it actually uses the mini HDMI. So I use the cable that's supplied with the monitor. We have the monitor hooked up. I do have uh, the, the partial lens hood on it, the frame. Uh, I did not connect the lens hood so that you can see everything, but I'm gonna walk you through. I'm gonna let you see what the image looks like. We'll point this camera towards the camera I'm recording with. Might look a little dark, um, but we're gonna go through all of the settings here. I'm gonna show you what uh, this does, and then I'll show you that case here coming up after that. All right, guys, so I've got it hooked up to the Canon Vixia R80. You'll notice there's my Sony NX5 with the lights. And if I zoom in, you can see, see that? That's my other monitor I've had for a while. It's the exact same monitor. So, um, so this one, same, even though it's packaged as generic. Uh, but let's take a look at the monitor itself. Let's take a look at all the menu settings and what it does and everything. You can see my reflection. I apologize, it's a little bit dark recording this on my iPhone. First thing you'll notice, indicator on the top right, 100%, that, so battery because I'm running off battery right now with the monitor. I don't have, um, I don't have it plugged into an AC source. Uh, the next thing you're gonna notice is down here, mode. So if I hit the mode button, it switches between AV and HDMI. Those are your only two. And it says right now I'm 1080p is my signal. So again, it's not a full 1080 picture. It's, it's um, 800 uh, vertical pixels uh, by 12, I forget the exact number, but, um, but mode, that's all it does. It switches between AV and HDMI. So if you're using HDMI, that's, that's it. That's all you're gonna do. You'll leave it in that mode. The arrows, when you're in the main, that's your volume. So you can increase your volume. You hear the feedback, so we will turn that down. So hearing feedback, but there, there controls your audio. Menu, go into the menu and you will see the first thing, picture mode, standard. If I hit F1 or F2, which is up down, and I go to standard, then I use my over buttons here on the bottom. And I need to, let me tilt down just a little bit so you can see those buttons better. So once I've gone down the pic picture mode, you have standard, mild, user, which is fully adjustable, dynamic, and standard. So if you want to fine tune this to more match, more closely monitor your output, I would go to user. Most of the time when I'm shooting, um, I'm on dynamic, uh, but you can see it gets a little bit darker. So we'll just say standard for now. Uh, the next thing down is color temperature. So you can predetermine your color temperature. Uh, and how did I, I hit menu, that's what I did. Let's go back in there. And hit the over button. So 93. 65, 93, or I can adjust the reds and greens, which is pretty, that's pretty interesting that you have that option and the tint. So you can manually adjust that. So 65, 93 or user. We'll stay with 65 for now. If I hit menu, pops me back to the very top and I can go over and then I can set, I have the option to set language I'll leave it on English, aspect ratio, auto, or you can manually set it. So four by three, 16 by nine, just scan, panorama, P to P, and auto. I'll just leave it on auto for now. You have blue screen. So when there's no signal, that gives you a blue screen. You can change it to a red screen or a green screen, black screen, white screen. Um, I'll leave it on blue screen for now. Uh, OSD transmission, that's on-screen display, it's off. You can turn on low, 
off. Oh, that's the transparency, on-screen transparency. Uh, so you can pick what you want. I, I like to leave it off. Uh, you can adjust where this shows up on your screen. So, whoops, I, went, I hit menu accidentally. Let's go down. So the horizontal, I can move it. I can move the vertical. We can go uh, on screen time. So it's set at 30 seconds. If we want to change it, we can set it to off. We can set it to 10 seconds. At off, then the on screen display stays until you turn it off. 10 seconds means if I sit here and do nothing, that's going to turn off after 10 seconds if I do nothing. 30, I'll leave it at 30. Um, actually, I'm going to leave it at, I'm going to put it at off because I don't like it turn off automatically. Backlight, power on, auto, that can change to manual. So really, if you plug it in, if you put a battery on and plug it in, it's going to turn on. Uh, I'm actually going to leave that on manual. Um, USB upgrade, that's firmware settings and then reset to factory default. And then you have the um, current version, which, and then if I go back to, I hit menu once and I go over. Now you have a, a nine grid that's off, zoom nine times, 16 times. So uh, gives you that option. I don't, I never use this stuff. Zoom mode, model one, model two. Scan mode, under scan, over scan, or under scan. I leave it under scan, me personally. Go back to the top menu, we go over, and now we have the option to turn on markers. So center marker, we can turn it on. See the red, it created a red center mark if I turn that on. I can do safe frames, 80%, 85, 90, 93, 96. Uh, cin basically cinema mode, um, and then off. Uh, we'll go back to, I'm going to go up here and turn this off because I hate having the, marker, the center marker on. We can go down, image freeze. So it can freeze the image. And as I move it, I can move my camera. I'm moving the camera, but nothing because it froze the image. Um, there could be uses for that stuff. Uh, I, I don't know. Image flip. Flips it. Vertical flip, horizontal flip, off. Uh, on screen display flip, anoramic, anamorphic. I'm sorry, anoramic. So if you like to shoot, if you're trying to shoot for. Yeah. So just a lot of different options. Check field, mono, red, green, histogram, has a histogram there for your output. False colors, and then you have focus assist, uh, essentially like peaking. So, well, no, yeah, it's peaking. And then you can also down here, the next one, you can um, change the peaking color green, blue, red, overexposure, you can turn that on or off, exposure level, you can set that, embedded audio, we can turn it on or off, look as it gives you audio meters, if you want to turn the audio meters on, so um, I'm going to leave that on for now, because actually I like having those on, um, ratio marker, so let's say you're shooting 16 by 9, but you need to shoot for a safe zone, you can do that with the markers or with the ratio marker. Marker color, red, um, let's see, red, green, blue, black, white. Um, go to the width, modified mark, all that. This gives you a lot of options to play with. If I go back here and we go to the last one, you get, um, this is where you can set your F1, F2, F3, F4 buttons. You can set what these do. So right now, F1 is histogram. F2 is false colors. F3 is check field. F4 is focus assist. But if I want to change those, then I just go down here. Like to, I'll leave one as histogram because I like that. False colors, I don't usually like. So I will change that to, let's find something I actually use. 
Um, let's do safe frame. And then, uh, hit, I think I hit menu. Hit menu and it takes. Check field. We will change that. What do I want? I don't ever flip. Don't image freeze. Uh, maybe overexposure. And I will set that. And I want focus assist as F4. When, so that is every, that's all the menu settings. And if I go back out and hit menu and I do that, now if I hit F1, I've got my histogram. If I hit F2, I've got my safe frame, which right now is 80%. I would normally set this at 90%. So I would go in there and change that. Um, oh, and I hit it again. I can, I can actually set it. Um, I wasn't aware that did that. Okay, F3, overexposure on. Obviously, I'm not overexposed right now. And F4 is focus assist is on. Focus assist is off. Let's turn off the frames. Let's say frames. There we go. There we go. And so, and I left the audio meters on the side. So that is everything this monitor does. And I can tell you, I know this image shooting back at my camera is pretty dark, but it's amazing. The, these monitors are pretty amazing. And if you've seen other videos I've done, uh, especially like live streaming high school football setup, it's using one of these monitors. Um, I think these are great. The uh, camera that you're looking at right now, the Sony NX5 that's on the monitor screen, is actually, um, it can output SDI and HDMI. So, um, but what I did was, I have an A10 mini switcher, and so I needed HDMI to, monitor, to the monitor and to the switcher. So I really, I bought a short little, uh, eight, basically it's an HDMI splitter, it's a cord, it doesn't need power. You plug one end into the camera, there's two HDMI outs. The only little caveat with that, two things have to be plugged in for it to work. So you have to plug it into two things, which why would you be using it if you didn't? So anyway, this is the monitor. That is the on-screen display. And so um, actually, I, I just think this is a really good monitor. All right, guys, so that is the 7-inch HDMI HD monitor. Again, not full 1920, 1080, but it's a really, really good monitor inexpensive monitor. I haven't told you yet how much it costs. I was saving that to the end. So are you ready for this? Pick these up at bhphotovideo.com. $89.99. $89. Under $100 for this HDMI monitor and it's worth every penny. Like I said, now I have up to four of them uh, and may add more in the future. These things are great. They're inexpensive and if something were to happen to them, pretty cheap to replace. I'll put a link to them in the description so you can uh, go check them out, buy them if you want. I paid for these. I have not gotten anything sponsored. Nothing has been provided to me or I'm not paid for this review. This is entirely my opinion, uh, but I love these things uh, and I wanted to share this with you guys. Last thing real quick, a couple of things. First, this is the sunshade. Uh, we talked about that with the Velcro. All this does is, is sit right over the top and it velcros right on. And there you have your sunshade. Um, this is excellent. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about before I end this video is I mentioned a very cheap um, monitor case. So, you know, this monitor is $89.99. You get online and you search for a monitor case that's made for a monitor like this. And some of them are $100, most of them are $100 or more. You might find one for 80, but a lot of these monitors are, are as much, if not more, than the monitor themselves, and that is absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, I knew of an alternative because I have several of these cases that I've used to keep my wireless mics and other items. So I'm gonna show you a case that um, I've, I'm using for this monitor and the other monitors like it, and it is this right here. So pick this up at Academy Sports. It's something local to where I live, but you can get them at Dick's. Most uh, Walmart used to carry them. I know Bass Pro, Cabela's, things like that. This is a Plano single pistol case. This is made for a gun, okay? So, but it is perfect. Hard shell, plastic case, and when you open it up, you have the diamond foam, okay? So 
seven inch monitors or smaller fit perfectly in here. So this will fit the monitor, the AC adapter, um, a cable, and your uh, cold shoe adapter or ball head will fit perfectly in here. You can probably squeeze in the HDMI cable if you want. Um, it starts getting a little tight. But what's really important is that this lens hood frame stay on your monitor. Uh, I'm going to show you here in a second how to pack this. But what you don't want to do with an LED monitor, LCD monitor, is you don't want a lot of pressure on the screen. So what you do is you leave the frame on and put this in the case for, uh, screen down. And what it does is it creates a gap between um, the foam and your, your screen. So you don't get that pressure and you won't damage your screen. So I'm going to show you here right now how to pack this um, with the monitor. And that's how we will finish up the show. All right, guys. So to pack this up, I'm kind of holding my phone while I do this uh, really quickly. But um, this case is open. I forgot to mention to you how much this costs. Nine bucks. Nine dollar case. And it fits your monitor. So we're going to grab the monitor. And you'll see it right here. And you'll notice you do not have to take your bracket off. Just loosen it and pop it to the underneath. And notice how I still have the frame on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this. I want the frame just inside the pocket there. Now you are going to have to push down. And it, this is going to press down a little bit once you close this thing. But this will keep it very secure because the frame gives you that opening. And one thing I forgot to mention before we even do that, your lens hood. So the, the extended lens hood, just, just pack that right here inside of your monitor. And like I said, I'm kind of holding my phone while I do this. Pack it in there, flip this over. We're gonna stuff that right in there like that. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to pause real quick because I'm going to go get the AC uh, adapter. And with the AC adapter, we're just going to place it in here like this. I compress this down a little bit as I close, close my case. It overlaps, so you want to pop that down on here. Now, it is a tight fit. I, I will be honest with you. It is a tight fit. So... But it is now in there. So Plano single pistol case, like I said, eight, nine bucks at Walmart, Bass Pro, Cabela's. You could probably even buy these on Amazon or online, but it's a hard shell case and it will completely protect your monitors um, and better than charging, you know, 70, 80, 100 bucks for a monitor case. All right, guys, so that is the uh, Feel World HDMI 7 inch monitor. Pretty cheap, less than a hundred bucks. These are awesome. You need to pick one up. Hey guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Leave a comment and always like that video. And we'll see you next time right here on Mike's World.